Hello again YouTube, AJ Shaver here and I want to talk about long lift firewood bags and though they may not be for everybody, I will tell you they definitely work for what we do and what other people do all around the country and I've even got some up in Alaska. So we have tried everything from just stacking things loose you know, like on a pallet, just run back and forth and take some shrink wrap and go around it. And then that failed. Then we tried actually making a firewood rack, <clears throat> laying down one pallet and then standing up two ends. And then that would hold a half a cord stacked. Um, but again, we were handling the firewood and it took some time to make the, uh, the pallet racks. And we figured out a way to do it within like, you know, using one two by four by 10, using two little 45 gussets on the bottom, using a, a big horizontal brace across the back. And that seemed to work pretty good. Um, then one year of using those, they would freeze to the ground and we'd put the forks in there and then pick it up. Well, then the fork would rip right through the pallet and then all the fire would go spilling all over the ground, okay? So we put those on top of another pallet so that we would just destroy one piece. And ah, like I think after using two years, just the nails and screws, everything started to wiggle back and forth and they would fall apart going from our wood lot down to the house level. We have a little quad path that kind of connects the two. And we would take like a strap and go around it and it would still come undone. And then I'm handling the firewood. Again, we handled it once to load it and then again to restack it and so there's got to be a better way. Um, we looked into the IBC totes which many of you guys use the IBC totes maybe you've got a good supplier you know in your area where they're halfway decent on the price. Everybody around us was not decent on the price. They were back then they were like 50 bucks 75 bucks or you had to take them you know with whatever came in them, you know, whether it was industrial soap, mulch dye, glue, and then you're left with the plastic, you know, tank. And I've seen different people, you know, cut them in half and make like a nice little, you know, roof over top of the firewood. And again, these aren't for everybody, but I'm just kind of giving you a little bit of a history on why we end up going with the log lift bag. Um, and the other reason with the totes it never really looked like they would hold enough. Um, it's probably a quarter of a cord, you know, loosely tossed into one. And um, then we're, we have very limited space up here on the woodlot. So to have, you know, all the firewood like this lined up, whether it was in, you know, a pallet rack or a tote, you know, the bags, I'm limited to what I have. And with the IBC totes, when they're empty, they still occupy space which again, I don't have that. So like everybody, we end up over on Google, on YouTube, you know, ran the roots, you know, going through different internet sites, trying to learn and, you know, kind of self-educate about the bags, joined a couple Facebook firewood forums and groups and, you know, try to look to see what other people were doing out there. And um, it seems that the Europeans really have the bags down um, they're kind of newer here in the States, but you know, over the last couple of years, we've made some significant strides, you know, introducing these bags to, you know, customers like yourself. And, you know, we met up with a company NNZ and, um, before we got involved with them, I want to say it was like the tail end of 2019 and they had moved like two or three pallets in like two or three years. And they were looking for somebody to kind of help advertise, to build the brand, make the market. And so we struck a deal. We got set up as a dealer for them. And um, they brought in some, you know, the pallets of bags. We warehouse them right there in um, Atlanta, Georgia. So when you buy an order from us, it's actually coming out of Georgia. And then it just kind of goes FedEx around, but I'm getting ahead of myself. And, um, had them send up a couple of sample bags. We got sample bags from other companies that were out there. And I really fell in love with 
this log lift bag. It's the, the mosquito netting on the sides that I really, really enjoyed because when I'm at the processor running the firewood, it goes into the cleaner, so all the little bits get shaken out of it, and it hits that 30-foot radius axle stacking conveyor. And with the mosquito netting from the operator controls, I could see the bag filling up. And then I said, well, if I can see into the bag, that means retail-wise, people can see into the bag. And we've dropped some off here and there. I haven't done as much of it as I wanted to, but ultimately I'd love to just wholesale the firewood, you know, to a landscape yard um, or a hardware store or something, you know, that's already got a skid steer. You know, they're used to loading customers' trucks and different things, whether it's mulch or stone or topsoil, that kind of thing. Um, basically, you just need something with forks to pick up the pallet. You can set it on a trailer, put it in the back of a pickup truck or something. And um, just wanted to go that route. But for what we're doing up here, we corn row all of these in. Um, we've maybe like 18 inches between rows. That way, when I come in with either you know, the tool cat or the skid steer, the tires come right down, you know, inside that opening. You don't have to worry about rubbing into the next bag and it gives good airflow coming by. So <clears throat> all of the sides, it's a nylon stitch with vents like every other row coming across. And the mosquito netting also allows for a huge amount of airflow um, to get into the bags and firewood, the key to drying it, as you all well know, is air movement so it was twofold for us to switch over to the bag you know we had done like the big bulk piles but we have a lot of shade up here well we did before i expanded and there's still a good amount of shade but not near what we used to have and the firewood would soak up that moisture off the ground and then um that black and white sooty mold would kind of move into the pile and it was just like really gross to load out. And I figured if I didn't like it, odds are the customer on the other end wasn't going to like it. And we wanted to, you know, set ourselves apart from all the, the chucks in the truck, you know, delivering a quart of firewood, you know, in the back of like an S10 pickup truck. And so this gave us a way to measure out, you know, a quantifiable number of cords being delivered. And yes, there are videos out there where we take one of these bags, flip it upside down, and really verify that this amount of firewood is a third of a cord. So you can search back on the YouTube channel and you can see some of those videos because I hate handling firewood. So I do it as minimally as possible because I'd rather just load this right off of the conveyor and I don't touch it. Um, being a one-man band, now I have my son involved, he's 14, and uh, he runs between the cleaner and the conveyor making sure the bags are you know strung out and uh, getting filled properly but you know it's i don't have the time to go through and stack everything you know whether it's the nice long rows and sure they're pretty i love looking at other people's work on facebook just as long as i'm not the guy stacking out you know acres of rows of firewood so it dries um this works for us and you know we have some other customers around the the u.s like i said and one of those is kyle crawford he's actually out in leadville colorado and he actually takes a helicopter it's a v max chopper which we'll show a little bit later here in the video and they go through these upper loops and they pick up four bags at a time and they take them up to these mountain yurts way up in the Copper Mountains of Colorado. So you might ask me, AJ, what sets your bags apart from the other bags? Well, I think being picked up and flown six miles by a helicopter, just hanging on to the upper loops, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. That uh, definitely sets our bags apart from uh, the other ones out there because I haven't seen anybody else that's actually flown firewood bags. Um, I mean, we do it here probably once every five or six weeks. We'll pick up, you know, the bags with the upper loops, go down to B3Q Barbecue, which we have an order scheduled for him. So maybe I'll get some video down there of doing that. 
but we use the log lift trailers and or the log motor trailers rather and we pick up the bags right off the trailer stretch over top of Dominic's fence at B3Q barbecue and set them right down inside his you know little storage area next to the smoker before we got involved with the bags and even with the firewood he was getting different lengths some of it was rotten some of it was just huge some of it was knotted he couldn't get a consistent burn or a consistent smoke out of it and he was having to pay a busboy to get in there on his breaks you know or take away from the restaurant time with the busboy and have him stack this firewood so it was taking away time from the restaurant and um dom came up here looked at the wood lot liked the bags said you know let's see what we can do and uh we've been doing that now for i think it's our third year delivering him wood he usually takes down uh two bags of cherry and one bag of hickory so we do take him a cord you know every time we go down and um i love it i don't have to again i'm not touching firewood we normally leave here drive 15 20 minutes depending on traffic I think we're on site for maybe 10 minutes and that's pulling the ratchet straps you know rolling everything up uh hooking the bags sending it over the fence and then storing the loader back away and i'm back here in the woodlot like in an hour um and the wood's all put away it's done over with um you know even like with kyle flying the firewood bags up in the mountains they just set them right off um you know next to the porches next to you know the patios and it's done people aren't restacking stuff um you know you ask well do you ever cover these up i don't you know we have a video out there um it goes back probably in it had to be like the spring of 20 because i wanted to see what the air quality was doing with drying out the bags so we torture tested one whole row we had the big cutoff coals. They were all red oak from a, a big landing job that we got to clean up. Um, and we loaded everything into the bags. It was the first row, like back where the, the log pile is behind me. And we went front to back. It was, you know, I think there's 21 bags that span each row. So I get seven cords per row. And we came back to those bags after splitting them in November. We came back like March or April. I pulled pieces from the middle of the bag, split them in half, and then took a moisture tester and jammed it in the inside split. And where we were reading like high teens, like just bumping 20%. And that was through the winter. That was rain, snow, sleet, everything that Mother Nature could possibly throw at these bags. And they still passed the moisture test in six months through the winter. So basically we'll come out, process the wood, you know, January, February into March, let them cook all summer long for the six months. And then I have seasoned firewood come September, October, and November, and it's only been in the bags. Um, so people have asked, well, do you just, do you sell it in the bags on the pallet? And we have, you know, we'll take like a $20 core deposit, you know, for the, just so I want the bag back um, and people will do amazing things for 20 bucks um, I once had a guy that we put in the back of his avalanche and he literally took a pocket knife and went he gutted it straight up the middle because he didn't want to unload it from the top down and then he brought me back this damaged bag and I said what are you doing and I said well I want my 20 bucks back I brought you the bag I said in good usable condition um, so needless to say, I kept 20 bucks and probably threw the bag out. But um, we do flip these bags probably on a good year, four to five times per season. Um, we've got a lot of video out there now on how we've been doing that with the telehandler, the skid steer, and even the log loader. Uh, every bag has these little unloading loops on the bottom of it. So you can either go straight through it with a set of forks. Just don't pick it straight up. Kind of pick it and roll it over there's a lot of just static weight with gravity down that you create the friction as you're picking it straight up because the bag wants to drag into the pool and then go up we've had a lot better success if we've kind of helped the bag roll over or kind of get it over on its side and then pick it up 
Um, the latest way that we've been doing it, like if you look on the channel here within the, the recent couple of videos, and maybe I'll put a tag in here for the video itself, um, just using the telehandler and we take those little unloading loops and we go around the pallet with the chains and then when the bag tips over, it's already attached to the pallet, the pallet's attached to the chains, the chains are attached to the forks themselves and it keeps everything together. I don't have to go back into the dump truck to get out the bag, to get out the pallet. You know, it, it keeps everything together as one unified piece. And it's actually pretty quick on how we've been doing it. Um, we've been selling firewood commercially for eight years. And I think we've been able to whittle into it little by little to make it as efficient as possible. And without these bags, we would not be doing um, what we're currently doing as far as the firewood volume. Um, you know, the other piece of it is having a good processor. You know, we run a brute force 1824 diesel. Um, when I'm on my A game and I kind of have that Johnny Cash get a rhythm in my head and we've everything cycling nice and smooth, we can do a full cord in 10 minutes. So that's three of these bags in 10 minutes. And yes, I know there's the naysayers out there, but again, dig back on the channel. There's lots of video of us doing just that. I've filled one of these bags in three minutes and our processor cuts through a 24 inch diameter. We run a 10 way wedge. I actually run a 12 way now. We just put that one in yesterday. And the sweet spot is really about that 16 to 18 inch diameter. It gets a good cut all the way around on all the different knives and it's just, it's picture perfect pieces every push. and. The radius axle stacking conveyor we've got the bag racks all lined up and basically we run anywhere from oh, i think the current setup is about eight different bags that go across and then we'll hang that ninth one with a set of pallet forks that way i can do three full cords at once the bigger deck on the processor i can do right about two cords worth of log length on the deck so then like while i'm reloading my son's moving bags and it's just this nice fluid piece that we work around the woodlot with just the two of us. And I can do it by myself, but it's just a little bit more efficient just with that extra set of hands. Um, but the log lift bags have been pretty much the hinge pin that we've been, you know, working our firewood business around and working it with. Uh, we've got a couple local guys here in town. We'll set them right off outside the garage. Uh, there's a fireworks stand in town. He takes two bags. We have that fancy little trailer that I can take two of these and run them right out. Um, again, it's, it's no stacking. It's just we back it right underneath his carport. He comes out with his skid steer and the forks. He takes up to his firewood stand, loads the individual bins, picks up the forks and takes it away. He's not handling the firewood. Um, now, there is another bag that we're getting a little bit more access to, so I'll drop it here as a little teaser video. Um, this same kind of white nylon with the vents in it, we do this material on all four sides. So if you're looking to basically fill the bag and forget about the bag, it's called a power lift bag. It's like a, a potato bag, an onion bag, but it has the vents in it, which allows the firewood to breathe, hence allowing it to dry. So we do the same white material on all four sides and the bottom, but we lose the unloading loops. So that's where I'm saying, if you just want to fill it and forget about it, that bag I think is like $2 cheaper than the log lift bags. And I think we have access to those like in a pallet quantity. I'm trying to buy more to put them in that warehouse so we can just kind of draw off of it like we do with the log lift bags. Like with these, we can do, there's like your 12 count, you know, sample order. That's definitely my most popular one. Then we do a 16 cord, which is 48 bags. Then we do, I think it's 120. Um, and then the full pallet is 260. And by the time you go from the 12 count order to the full pallet, every time I think we're dropping like 50 cents a bag as it comes down to the pallet quantity. And currently we're doing a sale on the log lift bags that by the time you get to the pallet quantity, they're actually like under $14 a bag, which is pretty crazy because these bags are awesome. Um, 
He'll be running this for probably the next two weeks or so. I'm going to do my best to make it the permanent price, but um, working again with the manufacturer. So um, right now, if you get, jump over to the website, it's just shaverequipment.com. Uh, we're redoing that a little bit. I want to get it so the bags are right up front <clears throat> and easy to access. But click on the firewood bags. That takes you over. There's a little write-up and a description about them. And then at the bottom, it says order quantity. And then again, you can select from that 12, uh, 12 count, the 48 count, the 120 count, or the full pallet. And then everything runs through from there. Um, it's the bags, the credit card fee, and shipping are all figured in. Um, we go right from the warehouse to your door. Usually the small quantities show up in a, um, a FedEx box, and that's the easiest way of doing that. So uh, jump on over to the website, shaverequipment.com, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And um, sorry about that. It was a neighbor's contractor coming up and dumped some dirt over the hillside. So. Um, but yeah, like I said, I just wanted to kind of give you guys just the little bit of a history that we've been using with these firewood bags. Um, we couldn't do what we do without them. Um, whether you like them, love them, or don't really care, that's up to you. But um, don't knock it until you've tried it, because uh, it doesn't get any easier than doing firewood when it's in the bags. Um, again, you know, we load it right off the conveyor. Guys have thrown stuff right in, you know, off of the splitter. It's just getting out of all of the handling and rehandling that comes with firewood. I have limited time to, you know, do the firewood, let alone keep touching it and rehandling it. So the firewood bags are a huge time saver. You know, the added benefit is with, the, you know, the mosquito netting and the ventilated sides, all of the air movement that goes through the bags to cure them up. Um, and, and get them seasoned in such a short time frame is just absolutely huge for us. You know, being able to pick them up from the top, scoop them up with the pallets, um, shoot, even fly them around with a helicopter like what Kyle does out there. It's pretty crazy, but, um, you know, like I was saying, if you jump over to the website, just shaverequipment.com, we'll throw some screenshots in there for this and um, use the promo codes that are on there. Um, oh, I want to give a plug out. We have Jake from Dude Ranch DIY. He's running the bags. Uh, Darren Woodruff uh, with Woodruff Woods is running the firewood bags. And um, Dick with Old Guy Firewood is running the bags as well. So there's three good channels. So if you think that I'm making it up, go watch their channels and they're using the bags too and there's a reason that they're doing it because they're tired of handling the firewood as well um seen a couple of videos up from jake i've seen a couple of videos up from darren uh dick is just getting his bags now so be on the lookout for his um again i'll put the tags and different things here in the video so you can click on that to head on over to their channels and just see how other people are utilizing the bags um i think we've been using them the longest but um Hey, they work for us. Hopefully they'll work for you. Um, like I always say here on the channel, these videos are not a paid promotion by the manufacturer. It's just an advertising tool. Um, we would really appreciate it if our phone rings versus theirs because it does take time and effort to do the videos like this. You know, we do put, you know, a significant amount of time into these to figure out, you know, the best tips and the tricks and the educational pieces I'm not just a sales guy thumbing through a catalog going, oh yeah, you want what? And then kind of, oh yeah, on page 36, there's these and then sell them. We're here, you know, you get my cell phone number when you buy from us. I want the repeat business. I want the personal connection. I want to build a relationship with everything that we sell from the Halverson stuff through the brute force stuff, you know, with the log lift bags, everything, because we use it. If something goes wrong, I know how to fix it, how to troubleshoot it, probably even what size wrench it takes to actually tweak it. So um, so if we can earn your business with the sales quote, give me a phone call. It's 833-SPLITTER. It's 833-775-4887. You can also email me at sales at shaverequipment.com. Um, the firewood bags are pretty much self-explanatory. Like I said, head over to the website, shaverequipment.com, select your quantity, enter the promo code, 
and then it just all goes through via credit card and again that's the bags the shipping and the credit card fee everything's figured into that price and i even list in there what the bag price works out to so um i really think with the sale price going on um it set these bags apart from the other ones that are on the market um we've been rolling through them here we did a post on facebook just about a week ago and it's kind of taken the internet by storm and it's uh rather surprising to see all of the different people that are coming out um so far we've been from i think washington state with sean larson out to michigan up into maine uh some stuff in tennessee some stuff down in arizona so they're all over the u.s um you know it's just a small shipping and handling fee on the boxes and stuff uh and again you know the pallet quantities of the log lift bags do ship for free to a commercial address so we cover that one just as a, a thank you for buying that many of them um so again i hope that i can earn your business and i uh, really hope to talk to you soon if you have any questions feel free to call happy to answer them for you um, we've got guys that put these inside of kilns for doing a heat treat and I was talking to one gentleman today, he's up in uh, northern New York, he actually wants to put them in a kiln, direct kiln, and take them up to 250 degrees, so we're going to see how those make it. Um, if anybody is using these in a kiln, or if you have used them in a kiln, please let me know. Uh, throw something in the comments down below, I'd love to hear from you. Just as an educational piece, I don't have power up here at the woodlot, so I'm not running the kiln. We're just doing the solar kiln and just letting Mother Nature cook these in the bags. Um, I know this video got a little bit longer than normal, but just want to say thank you so much for watching. Um, again, hope to earn your business. And uh, don't forget to hit our like and subscribe button. And these log lift bags live up to our motto of working hard to be lazy. So with that, I'm going to call this one a wrap, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.